With the release of many small, fuel-hungry Motorola fighters in DCS, I feel it's about time we talked about setting up our afterburner detents to help save said fuel. We'll be going over how to set up the in-game throttle to match your own afterburner detent. For this you will require a throttle with a physical detent on it. Such as a Thrustmaster Warthog which I will use in this example. Note that you do have to flip the detent piece over to use this feature, and that I've filed mine down to allow me to push through the detent instead of having to lift over it. The position of the afterburner ignition varies from aircraft to aircraft and throttle controller that you own, so I will be teaching you how to set this up for yourself. Get started by going into a free flight with your aircraft of choice. Gently increase your throttle until the afterburners light. Adjust up and down and try and find the exact position the afterburner kicks in. We'll then pause, adjust controls and enter axis assign and locate the throttle axis and press axis tune. Wiggle your throttle ever so slightly to get the position to update. This will now show us the location on the line where our afterburner is activating. Next we'll tick user curve. With this ticked we have a list of adjustable points below our axis. The red dots represent the location of our physical controls. One is following the curve and the other on the edge. The black square represents the input interpreted by the simulation. Our throttle percentage is represented by the x-axis. And the y-axis represents the rate of change. Combined we can see how adjustments affect each other visually as a curve, or at present a straight line, as they have a one-to-one -one relationship. You will need to remember where the afterburn activates which is the position we left our throttle in. This is the horizontal location of our black square. Note the number shown below the black square. We can see it is close to 20, so we will estimate that it is about 21, and so we know the afterburner will kick in around 21. We will now move our physical throttle back to resting on the detent in the military power position just before afterburner. Our goal is to place the black square representing the in-game input onto the same location the afterburner activates, just after we pass the detent on our physical throttle. We can adjust the curve at each point with the slider bar below or by entering a number manually. Stop the adjustments being mirrored on the axis by ticking the slider option. Now we'll adjust the slider below the point that our physical detent is until it is lined up with the location where the aircraft's afterburner will kick in which is at roughly 21. Now, when we pass our detent, the afterburner should kick in, however, as you can see, our line is now a little twisted. If we work up and down the throttle control, you can see the in-game input of our throttle is actually stopping before advancing again in-game. This will give an uneven response and can make fine adjustments to the throttle unpredictable and difficult. So we need to correct this by smoothing out the curve. Ideally, we want to make the curve smooth after the afterburner activating. So we'll adjust the values and then minimize the rate at which our throttles accelerate to reach the afterburner point to avoid an overly sensitive throttle as we approach the detent from military power just before the afterburner. Now we've got a nice smooth response. You can see the in-game input slowly moves ahead of our own input to meet the in-game afterburner position as we reach our physical detent. If you do not do this, you will find the throttle prior to the detent will suddenly get much more sensitive and imprecise. Unfortunately, in order to achieve this, we've had to sacrifice accuracy a small amount across the whole range. Alternatively, you could leave it as is and have the jump up in power as you reach the detent. There is no real workaround for this, the further away your physical afterburner detent is from the in-game one, the greater the accuracy sacrifice is going to be. You can choose where to lose some of your accuracy however, by adjusting the curve before the detent. I've not found this to present an issue to me personally, but you may wish to tinker with your own curves so you can target greater accuracy at specific regions of your throttle to your own personal taste. Remember, the flatter the line is, the greater the fine accuracy you'll have there, but you'll have to make up for it somewhere else. If we hop back to our aircraft in the sim and give it a test, we should now find the detent and the afterburner more or less line up. You may require some small adjustments, but you should be in the right ballpark now. If the afterburner lights before the detent, increase the value. Conversely, decrease it if it is not activating after the detent soon enough. Remember to use small, slow throttle inputs whilst testing to account for engine responsiveness. 
Sadly, this is not exactly a user-friendly way to handle the afterburner setup compared to, say, Falcon BMS, which lets you set the actual detent position of your hardware in-game to allow you to align it. But the axis curve settings are quite powerful, allowing you a detailed adjustment of your responses. In an ideal world, I would like to see a similar feature in DCS just to streamline the whole process, but hopefully I've now given you the tools required to manipulate the throttle curve to your own desire. I hope you've enjoyed and take care.